Welcome to USA Global TV and Radio, where our mission is to provide education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. USA Global TV and Radio connects you with experts and audiences all around the world every single day to help you succeed in business and to live a richer life. Visit us at usaglobaltv.com to learn about career and life-changing training and mentoring programs like The Listening Mentor. Subscribe to our newsletter to stay informed about our special programs and offers. Discover how you can become a guest on one of our shows or a host or producer of a USA Global TV and radio show of your very own. That's USA Global TV and radio, where the doctor is always in. Hello, and welcome to Intentional Productivity Tips. I am your host and very favorite strategic productivity partner, Megan. And today we are going to talk about, we're continuing our Productivity Boost Core 4 series. So today we are on habit number three. And so we're going to talk today about connecting your goals to your to-do list. But before we get started, I just want to remind you that you are watching Intentional Productivity Tips. You can find us and you can find my show on YouTube. You can find me on USA Global TV and Radio's YouTube channel. Please take a moment, like, subscribe, and even get notified for my show or any of the other shows that are on. You can also find out information about USA Radio Global TV excuse me, you can also find information about USA Global TV at our website, which is usaglobaltv.com. So let's talk about our productivity core four habits. And let's talk today specifically about connecting your goals to your to-do list. So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up a presentation so that we can take a look and walk through connecting our goals to our to-do list in four simple steps. Again, we are talking about our core productivity boost series. We are doing our core four productivity habits. This is our third week. So we are talking about tracking and updating priorities and goals. Two weeks ago on our first episode of this series, we talked about creating a daily process, a daily checklist process. Last week, we talked specifically about calendaring and time management tips. So if you haven't had a chance, go back and watch those when you get a moment. Because again, taking control of your productivity, being intentional with your productivity is going to help you to be able to work smarter, not harder. It's also going to help you to be able to enjoy the life that you've worked so hard to create. So what are we going to talk about today? Today, we're going to, again, talk about connecting our goals to our to-do list. And so to do that, we're going to talk about three things. First, we're going to talk about connecting our goals to our to-do list in four steps. Then we're going to talk about some of your productivity preferences. As we know, making it preferred for you and how you're going to track your goals specifically is the second thing we're going to talk about. And then today, we have a productivity quick tip that is about your master password. And it's been a timely tip for me. So let's get started talking about connecting our goals to our to-do list. So the first step, whenever we're talking about our goals, the first step, the first thing that we want to do is we want to set clear goals. We want to say to ourselves, what is, what are the goals that we are working towards? Sometimes people say, why, you know, why should we be intentional with our goals? We've got some statistics here that I think are important for us to remember. Um, One, people who set goals are 43% more likely to achieve them. So if we set them, we're already on a path to where we're going to be able to achieve them. 48% of goal setters say that they write their goals down. Um, In writing them, it is an important thing. It's something I've always believed in because I think, especially in this technical world, when we do all the typing, I will be honest, I think handwriting goals out and getting that connection with your brain is a powerful thing. Um, Setting challenging but achievable goals leads to 90% more better performance. So if we set goals, we're going to perform better. Um, Of the 20% of people who set goals, so 
of the people in the world, only 20% set goals and 70% of that 20% do not achieve goals. The only reason I'm bringing this up is so we can see why it's so important to be intentional with our goals and to find habits and processes with connecting our goals to our to-do lists that work for us. It's been found people who submit weekly accountability reports tend to achieve 40% more than those who don't. So people, again, who have a clear goal, who have an item or something they're clearly working towards are more likely to reach it and to be more productive and more successful than those who don't. The numbers part is a very good part about why it's important to um, be intentional with our goals. It's important to review and see statistically it is a good thing to do. But we also need to say, why is it good for our life to be able to set goals? What does it do for us? Here's what I'm going to say, and, and this is where I agree with Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins says setting intentional goals is the first step in turning the invisible into the visible. So setting your goals is the first step in being intentional to turn things from invisible to visible. And I'll tell you that I am very visual when it comes to my goals. One of the things, and you'll see right here on this slide, one of the things that's important for me, one goal that I set for myself in about 2014 is that my job is always going to allow me to wander work. My job is always going to allow me to be remote and to wander work. And so that's a goal that I have set for myself. And so it's how I've operated and made decisions for my jobs. And part of the reason why is I've been able to work on cruises. I've been able to work um, on the beach. I've been able to work at meditation gardens. I can see myself doing it. So it turned from the invisible to the visible. As soon as I could see myself wander working and I could see the places I was doing it, I knew how to make that happen. So it's important that we are clear on our goals and why it is we want to do something. When it comes to setting goals, oftentimes people will ask me, What's the best way to set goals or what's the right way to set goals? Now, the right way and the best way are not going to be the same for everybody. Let's be honest. There is no best way to set goals. That is a, a blanket statement. It is true that there is a right way for you and a best way for you to set your goals. So let's look at a few ways that we can set goals. There are some people, I've worked with a lot of clients over the years on setting goals. And I have some clients who are like, okay, here are my goals. This is what I want to do. I love that about clients. It's absolutely not how I was with my goals, but I appreciate it about other people. So I've guided people when they're setting goals to go through a few different options. There's some iterations or some options you can take to figure out what goals are specific for you to set your goals. One of them, one thing I always recommend is a visualization session. Quiet things down, close your eyes, take a minute and visualize what are the goals you have for yourself? What are the goals you see yourself completing? Where is it that you want to be and what goals do you have to take to get there? Another way is journal. Let your mind go. Take time to journal so you can just let your mind go. Another way to set goals is to organize your life by roles. What I mean by this is, is for example, we could be a parent. We could be um, an entrepreneur. I could be a volunteer. I could be a facilitator. There are different roles we have in life, right? How do I show up for my friends and family? I'll be honest with you, one of my goals, I call my friends and family, the people who are close to me, my A team, my angel team. And so one of my goals is to be in contact with each angel team member at least three times a year. Sometimes that's hard, but I've been able to do that. And so it's, again, taking time to say, okay, what are the roles I have in my life and what goals do I have within those roles? Obviously for professional it's easy to, you know, not easy, but we know professionally how we want to start setting goals. It might be something with spiritual or mind or body. Again, if we identify the roles, I am a healthy person and my body is better than it was last year. If that's a goal that I have, I know what do I need to do to what steps do I need to do that? So again, we can visualize, we can journal and just let our minds go. We can review our lives by our roles, the categories that or we can review by the categories that we have. Um, I am a professional. I am a student. I am a friend. I am learning to cook. I am learning to be more healthy. Um, 
true story, I don't cook. So learning to cook would be good for me, but not going to happen soon. So again, we can review by the categories of our life. Or we can just review, brainstorm a list of what are the goals that we have in life. When we look at it, we know it's important to set goals because it's going to impact how we operate. It's going to make us more productive. So we want to look at how we set goals. And again, there's a variety of ways. The important thing is stop, take time to be intentional to set your goals. The best way to connect your goals to your to-do list is to have goals. So that's the first step. The second step that we have is we want to talk about our tracking method. Where is it that we track our goals? Where is it that we're keeping track of them? And this is, again, in our electronic world, the options and places we can track our goals seems like it's unlimited. And so we want to think about what some of the options are and what works best for us. For example, we could keep them as a note on our device. We could journal. We could keep them on our calendar. There's so many goal planners, passion goal planner. When you think about it, there's specific goal planners, Erin Condren. There's also apps. There's also CRMs. When you think about it in your life, you have a variety of places where you track information. So the question you need to ask yourself is where is the best place you are going to track your goals? And wherever that is, that's where you want to track your goals. But you want to take time to ask yourself, what are the things I'm going to pick up? What are the things I'm going to go back to? Where is it that I'm going to want to go to look for my goals? When personalizing your goal tracking, I think there's things that are very important. It's important to organize based on what is important to you. Make it a party for your eyes. I will be honest with you. I am a huge person for color coding my goals. Um, just as when we talk about calendars, I talk about how I color code my calendars. My calendar color coding is connected to my goal color calendar, my goal setting um, color coding. That wasn't as easy to say, but my when I am creating and tracking my goals, I do things like color code them and make it a party for my eyes. Also, we want to be realistic to focus on building long-term habits. We want to focus on building not long-team habits, but long-term habits as far as how are we going to be looking at our goals long-term. Goals are a lifetime. They're not something that is, they're not transactional, right? Goal setting is a process. It's not a transaction. So we need to think about what are the things that we're going to be willing to do every month or however often. And then when goal setting, it is important that we keep improving and we keep adjusting and we keep finding it, figuring out what works and what doesn't work. When we find something that works, keep improving until you find what you like. I'll show you. So what I've got here for you is an example of um, this is an old goal setting board that I used a while back. But you'll notice what I did on my goal setting board. This is a Kanban view. And so what I did is I would divide by quarters. And I also, as you can see, I track my goals. I have my categories that have my goals on them. So I'm able to see my goals and able to visualize and know what is on my current goals and priorities. So taking time to personalize how we want to track goals that works for us is critical. When you think about it, setting goals is the start of the battle. But goal setting that is effective and long-term successful is based on the habits and the tracking that you set up. So take your time and be intentional to find what works for you. The next step that we want to take. So step three is to connecting our goals to our habits. Step three is brainstorming specific goal details. So we know we might have a goal of, I am going to lose 20 pounds, or I am going to incorporate um, uh, an exercise program into my life, right? That is a great goal. But in order to make it happen, we need a little bit more information. We need to actually break out that goal and, and make it a little bit more understandable for the steps and actions that we're going to take. We need to actually take our goals and turn them into art, right? I personally think that when people have completed their goal setting, that it's like their goals are a 
are a work of art. And so we want to think about the specifics. And so since we're talking about art, um, I do have a quote by Pablo Picasso here that I think is appropriate when we're talking about goal setting, which might not at first sound like it, but once we think about it, action is the foundational key to all success. So as Picasso says, action is the foundation key to all success. So how do we put action with our goals? How do we make sure that our goals are going to be smart so that we can put action to them? You probably have heard before of SMART goals. A lot of times uh, over, you know, however many years um, that you've been goal setting, for me, it's been um, a long time. We won't go into it since last dec last century. But it's important that we have goals that aren't just goals, but that they're SMART goals. So we know that there is, is a great way using the word SMART to think of goals. Um, and so SMART goals are that goals are specific measurable, actionable, realistic, and time-bound. Now, when I talk about SMART goals, I talk about making your SMART goals work for you. Uh, about a month ago, I was working with a client and we were working on her goals and she was wanting to make sure her goals were SMART. And so we were going through, we started specific and measurable. And so um, she actually Googled what SMART, what all of the words meant within SMART. And when she got to R, she was like, a lot of times um, R, when you look online, different people make R for reasonable. She was like, I don't want it to be reasonable. I want my R to be ready, that if I've got this goal, that I am ready for it. And I said, absolutely fabulous. When we think about being intentional with our productivity, we get to be selfish. So we get to sell, set, we get to set our smart goals the way we want them to be smart. So we need to take time to make sure that they're specific, that they're measurable. Again, that our goal isn't that I'm just going to lose weight, right? Or my goal isn't that I'm just going to grow my social media following. It's that I'm going to grow my LinkedIn following. It's that I'm going to grow my Instagram following by X number. I'm going to make more TikTok videos, right? It's the specific number that's with it. And it needs to be measurable. So how do we measure it? Obviously, we can measure how many times we work out. If it's a if it's a workout goal or a physical goal, we can measure it by how we're feeling, by our weight, by our performance. You know, so it's important that it's measurable. Goals that are smart also need to be actionable. So what task or what action are we going to take? And R for me is realistic. For me, my goals have to be realistic. So for example, a social media posting. At one point, I was like, I'm going to post on LinkedIn every day to grow my following and to grow my content cat catalog. And then about a week later, I was like, I can't do this every day. I think I can do it three days a week or four days a week. So it's important that we look at our goals to make sure that they're realistic and that it's something we're wanting to do and that we're able to do it. And goals need to be time bound. Our goals need to be either due at a specific time or we know when they're going to be or how long they're going to be. It's not over the rest of my life, I'm going to become more healthy. It needs to be something that's time bound. So we've identified that our goals are smart are smart, right? So when we think about it, we identified our goals, we identified where we're going to track them. And now we're talking about how we're going to turn them into actions. So we've talked about setting up smart goals. So what we want to do, and this is an important step, and this is one of my favorite steps of goal setting. Once we have our goals, again, grow my social media content following and following. Once we have that goal, that is a great goal, but then we need to turn the goals into actions. So after we've got our goal and our tracking system, we want to go back and we want to look at each of our goals and say, what are each of the tasks that need to be completed so that I can reach this goal? So for example, one of my goals is, is in two years, I want to spend um, three weeks um, in Bali. And so in order for me to do that, one of the very first things that has to happen is my passport is out of date. And so I need to, um, if I'm going to travel, I need to have a new passport. So what I want to do is if travel, if, if spending two weeks and three weeks in Bali in two years is my goal, there's all of the steps identifying where I'm going to go, buying the plane ticket, 
all of those actions that you want to take, again, renewing my passport, what we want to start to do is identify all the actions that that goal is going to take, because that's going to help us to understand what it is that's on our plate and where we need to go, right? The other thing that we can do is after we've identified the action, so the good news is we've identified these actions in our goal tracking system, right? So now what I would like to recommend and this is where we can decide how extra, extra we want to go, but this is in the details element. One thing I always do is I always recommend putting a time frame, or if there's a specific due date or if there's a specific deadline. So for example, if I want to make a family calendar for 2025, um, obviously I have to finish it before sometime in December so it can be ordered, right? So I want to put my timeline um, in there that I need to order it, that I need to pick the pictures again, so we can start to identify in November, December, I need to start picking my pictures, right? Otherwise we're not going to have it. So we want to start to identify timeframes and due dates. Another thing we want to do as much as possible is include time estimates or task estimates. And this, for example, let's go back to the passport issue. Depending on where you live and where, you're, where you are, it might take several weeks or even months to get your passport. And so that's, again, where you want to include time estimates. Right. There's going to be a, a long period of time in this. Is this a phone call that I can do in 15 minutes? But when we're looking at your goals, you, you want to turn the goals into actions and as much action as you can tolerate and that you want to start putting into your goal setting plan. I highly recommend. So that was our third step. Right. How what information and details are we going to use to turn our goals into actions? The fourth step is the money making step. The fourth step is incorporating monthly reviews of your goals into your life. It's great to set goals, but having a beautiful chart or board, and, and I love, you know, as you can see from my Kanban board, I love when it's time to create my goals. I love doing that. But the money and the actual success happens in how you incorporate the review and the action into your day. And so there's a little process that we can do with this, right? You want to review regularly and you want to review often. I recommend reviewing your goals monthly. I recommend reviewing them at least at the beginning of the month because it gives you an idea of where you're going to go. Also, depending on the month. Right now, we're currently in September. So we know that when I review my goals in October, we know we're starting the holiday season. And so we look at it at that time and we want to look at it based on the calendar and the seasons of our life. When reviewing, there's four things I always recommend doing. First, when it comes to your goals, take a minute, quiet your brain and just visualize. What are my goals? Where am I? What path do I want to go on? Take some time to quiet your mind and visualize where you're headed with your goals. Then Break open your notebook, your Kanban board, whatever it is that you have with your goals. Look at your goals and assess. Are you on track? Are you ahead? Is there need, anything you need to modify? Anything you need to adapt? You know, assess where you are because then you can adjust. Do you need to modify? Do you need to make some changes? Do you need to look at things more often? Are there tasks you haven't been able to do? What you want to do is you want to review them often and you want to adjust. And then the fourth part is you want to celebrate. It's important when we're working on our goals that we constantly are celebrating what it is that we're doing. There was a study published in the Journal of Personality and, and Social Psychology that found that individuals who set specific goals and review them regularly experience a 90% increase in goal attainment. So the reason we have spent and the reason that connecting your goals to your to-do plan is a part of our productivity core four series is because if we are operating from our goals and if we have a clear plan of where we're going, we are increasing our success and our chance of getting there. And isn't that really what intentional productivity is about? I think it is. And that's why I'm going to encourage you to do it. So let's review the four steps to connect your goals to your to-do list. One, set clear goals. Two, choose a tracking method. Choose a method where you're going to track them. Three, brainstorm specific goal details. And then four, incorporate monthly reviews. 
Once you have your goal details, then you can add them to your to-do list and you can track them on an ongoing basis. Taking time to be intentional with your goals is going to change your mindset and your productivity in a lot of ways. And one of the reasons for that is because, again, you have a clear path of what you're working towards. You know where you're spending your focus and your time. We have 24 hours in a day. And I'm going to remind us that we can't change that. There's no way to boost. There is no Botox to increase our 24 hours in a day, seven days a week. And so we need to be intentional with connecting our goals to our to-do list. And we can do that in the four steps we just discussed. So that is our third productivity core four habit. Next week, we are going to be talking about our fourth habit, which is a productivity tools check-in, which is going to be a lot of fun. But before we do that, let's get to today's productivity quick tip. Today's productivity quick tip is about being intentional with your master, master password planning. Being intentional with your master password planning. Now, I'll be honest with you. I loved this theory. It was probably it was sometime in the last 10 years. My sister and I went on a cruise and I went away and I love going on cruises because there's no way you're reaching me. I'm not logging in or anything like that. When I got off the boat, I was like, oh no, what if I don't have my password? Well, fortunately, before I had written my master password down um, on a notepad that I'd taken with me. And so after that, I was like, oh, from now on, when I go on vacations, I'm going to ha love having my master password. Well, I will be honest with you. Over the last week or 10 days, I've realized the importance of protecting ourselves and our master passwords um, isn't just about vacation, <laughs> although it's fun, but it's important for us to realize and to ask ourselves, do we have our critical passwords or a master password written and accessible? And the reason it came up for me is I'm currently staying in Northern California in Lake County and there are and have been wildfires it, as it's wildfire season. And there's been many wildfires, unfortunately, and tragically throughout the States. Over the last 10 days, there have been two fires that have been pretty close to where I'm staying. And it made me realize when I moved here, I start or during fire season, I have a go bag, things that need to go with me in case I need to go. But I realized I hadn't included my master and critical passwords in my go bag. It's been a reminder to me. And so, um, and unfortunately in one of the fires, there was, um, a loss of a lot of, uh, damage to uh, buildings and to people's property. And so one of the local businesses is helping people to access and to get what they need with their technology. All that to remind me that we don't know what's going to happen. And if we're intentional with protecting ourselves, especially in how we can access our master password. So what I recommend is four steps to do this. One, identify a password protection system. There are many out there. There's many, many password protection systems. I recommend investing in one that you're the most comfortable with. Two, identify critical passwords. What are the passwords that you might need? Is there a work or a project password? What is your personal password? Is it all one? Is there a system you're in? Is there a child school system? Again, what are those critical passwords? A, make sure they're in your password protector. And B, make sure if it's something you might want to access, do you have it written? And is there somewhere that you would be able to access? Write your password down on paper and keep it someplace safe and accessible. And then I would say, take it when you're traveling. Now, obviously on a notepad, you don't want to write, this is my master password and the key to all the important information in my life. But again, if you have those information for your master password, that information that's critical for you, because again, if we're, a, if we are a digital world, there are some, there are some roadblocks that we might be impacted and not being able to log into the digital world. So how can we protect ourselves? So that's this week's productivity quick tip is to make sure you're protecting your master password. So on today's episode, my goal 
as it is every week is that at least you learn one tip, one suggestion, one idea, one thing you can take tomorrow, the next day, or at some point soon and impact in a positive way your productivity. So today we talked about connecting our goals to our to-do list. We talked about four steps that we're able to do that, taking your goals and breaking them down into action so you can then add them to your action list. Um, and then also your preferences for how you track them. And then our productivity quick tip was, where is your master password? I am Megan. This is Intentional Productivity Tips. Again, we are finishing. Next week, we will finish our fourth productivity core four habit, um, where we're going to be talking about a tools review. You can find me here on USA Global TV and Radio's YouTube channel every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific. Please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, you can email me at Megan at IndelibleGlobal.com, or excuse me, at IndelibleGlobal, Megan at IndelibleGlobal. And I'm also on Instagram. You can find me at Intentional Productivity Tips. Thank you for this time that we have spent together this week. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you. I appreciate you taking this journey to be more intentional with your productivity tips. And now a word from our sponsor. We face daily cyber risks, spending over seven hours of screen time, including 4.5 hours on mobile phones. This convenience comes with significant dangers, with cybercrime costs predicted to exceed $10.5 trillion by 2025. In 2023 alone, seniors lost over $3.4 billion to cybercrime. Our goal is to make social engineering concepts of cybersecurity easier to understand. We work with business teams, senior living facilities, investment companies, and educational institutions, both individually and in groups. We offer real-life examples to help you recognize and prevent attacks with sessions available both in person, in selected regions, and remotely. Schedule your training session or to learn more, contact us today. Call us at 847-845-9360. Email us at info at cybersecurityeasy.com. Protect your team and family with cybersecurityeasy.com. My name is Dr. Felix Kravitz, and I am the founder of cybersecurityeasy.com, LLC. We live in a world full of vulnerabilities and cyber risks. We spend almost four and a half hours a day on our mobile phones. It's over seven hours of screen time daily when including computer use. We often forget that this convenience comes with risks. Published data predicts that the cost of cybercrime will exceed $10.5 trillion in 2025. These numbers encompass not only businesses, but also each one of us, including our children and our parents. In 2023, the FBI reported over $3.4 billion lost by seniors aged 60 and older. CybersecurityEasy.com LLC's initiative is to massively support the community by providing cyber safety coaching and improving social engineering awareness. Our goal is to make social engineering concepts of cybersecurity easier to understand. We work with business teams, seniors, and educational institutions, both individually and in groups. We cover various topics from phone phishing attacks to AI-generated voice cloning, robocalls, password protection, and more using life examples. Talk to us today. Call us at 847-845-9360 or email us at infozoocybersecurityeasy.com. USA Global TV and Radio proudly presents our partner and sponsor, Mr. Philip Sykes and the British School of Excellence. Building confidence, changing lives. And now proudly presenting the Polished Professional. On a transformative journey with the British School of Excellence's comprehensive suite of masterclasses, crafted to elevate your professional and personal life. Eight outstanding modules will elevate you to the next level. Module one, exploring life's purpose, delves into the depths of self-discovery, guiding you to chart your unique path to fulfillment and success. Module two, mastering professional presence and confidence. 
This masterclass is a deep dive into the art of self-assurance and commanding presence, which is essential for standing out in today's competitive landscape. Module three, learn the secrets of visual impact, how to curate a personal style that amplifies your professional brand. Module four, mastering professional etiquette and communication excellence, navigating the nuances of corporate interaction with grace and tact. Module five, elegance and eloquence. We impart powerful techniques to captivate and persuade any audience with your oratory skills. Module six, unlock the potential of your emotional intelligence, EQ, and harness the ability to connect, empathize, and lead with emotional savvy. Module seven, mastering DISC, building a gateway to understanding behavioral styles, fostering better personal and professional relationships. Module eight, mastery and dining etiquette, building your confidence to perfect the subtleties of dining with finesse, enhancing your social savviness at any table. Step into the Polish Professional Program where poise, elegance and excellence aren't just taught, they're instilled for life. Join us to redefine your potential and polish your professional edge. To learn more, go to thebritishschoolofexcellence.com. The British School of Excellence are investors in people. Let us invest in you. Hello, I'm children's author, Diane Floyd Bain, and I am co-host for several of the USA Global TV and radio shows. I joined because of the purpose of the USA Global TV and radio. They provide content for the viewers and listeners, an opportunity for people around the world to have their own show or even be a guest on an existing show. We truly believe in helping others get their positive message out to the world. We also have the opportunity for the listeners, you can watch on several platforms and on YouTube, you can ask questions and even give a comment. We absolutely love it. I love being part of the USA Global TV and radio because I love positive messages and who doesn't? And we need more of that in the world. We are a family and we hope you will join us and become part of the family too. Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck, President, Founder, and Chief Listening Officer of USA Global TV and Radio. She is a certified life, career, and executive coach. Dr. Jacqueline is the Amazon number one best-selling author of Behind the Green Screen and Adversity to Awesome. As the listening mentor, she teaches children and their families how to listen at an elevated level through the book series titled, the Amazing Adventures of Lady Ella, The Listening Mentor. The Creative Hearts Awakening book series features heart-centric creatives who share their awakening journey. 
Through the Power of Listening educational course platform, people can get certified as elevated listeners on USA Global TV and radio. Learn how to center yourself and align with nature through the power of nature, plants, and shrines. The Journey of Chakra Psychology course will educate you on the chakras and their meaning. The Intuition of the Heart course will help you understand how to trust your intuition. Learn how to face the shadows of self and understand the impact of following trends and materialism. Set boundaries and ask for permission to help establish better relationships, deeper connections, and more authentic conversations. Take your communication expertise to a higher level with the course for curious humans. After all, we are not robots. Looking to start your own podcast platform? Get everything you need in the Podcaster Pro Package with Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck. How can music, breath, and your voice set you free? Find out with the Power of Listening courses. Dr. Jacqueline is a certified meditation teacher, yoga instructor, and Juice Plus distributor. She will help you create a plan for your healthy lifestyle. As an expert in the art of interviewing, with over 3,000 hosted and or produced live broadcasts, Dr. Kerbeck helps her clients stand out as global broadcasters. Dr. Kerbeck's books are available on Amazon. Start your listening journey by reading. Tune into the Listening Mentor TV show, Fridays on USA Global TV, and learn how listening can be your superpower. Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck, MBA, DBA, Certified Holistic Life, Career, and Executive Coach, Certified Yoga Sculpt Teacher, Certified Meditation Teacher, The Listening Mentor, Singer-Songwriter, Founder, President, Chief Listening Officer of USA Global TV and Radio, DrJacqueline.com. Thank you to all our elevated listeners, team members, animal characters, and co-authors. Contact us at 215-852-9406. Jacqueline at drjacqueline.com.